My name is Elizabeth Phelps, and I'm a professor of psychology and neuroscience. My lab focuses on understanding emotions influence on learning and memory, and we specialize in trying to understand how this is represented in the human brain. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is our studies looking at emotion and memory, particularly as it relates to memory for the 9-11 attacks. Understanding memories for emotional public events has been of interest to psychologists for a long time. The very first study of this type looked at the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and was published in 1899. The next study was published in 1997 and it looked at the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and other world leaders. Um, in that study in 1977, they introduced the term flashbulb memory to describe memories for these types of events. And they used this word because it, it characterized the qualities of the memories that they were studying. So when something like this occurs, people often report having a memory that is vivid and detailed. You know, you have the sense of reliving when you now recollect that event. And so Brown and Kulik suggested, the authors of the 1977 study, suggested that these memories have a picture-like quality, almost like, a, almost like they were taken with a camera with a flashbulb. Um, so you have that sense of you know, things getting frozen in time with a flashbulb. So they coined the term flashbulb memories. We wanted to study um, flashbulb memories by looking at memories for the 9-11 attack. This, like the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, seems like the type of quintessential event that would lead to these um, very vivid and detailed memories for an emotional public um, event. So immediately after the 9-11 attack, um, we had the idea to study this, this event um, in terms of its consequences for memory. Um, it seemed to us the, the, the prototypical type of event that would lead to flashbulb memories. And to do this, um, I talked to some of my colleagues at other universities, and some of them who contacted me with an interest to study this, because NYU, of course, has a special, unique role being so close to the World Trade Center. Um, a unique possibility for doing research on this topic. And we set up a consortium of memory researchers from across the country within three days of the terrorist attack. Um, we put together a survey that asked a number of questions about the events of 9-11. Things like, where were you, who you were with, what your emotional responses were, were um, what were the events that actually occurred, who did you think was involved in the, the attack, how much attention did you pay to the media, we asked some sort of more cultural interpretations of what the significance of this event was, um, and that's just a small range of the types of, the, of questions that we asked. Um, and we gave this survey to uh, about 1,500 people across the country the week after the terrorist attack, and um, about 600 of them were from New York City. We then did a follow-up survey a year after the attack in 2002, and another survey two years after that in 2004. So when we looked at the data, what we found somewhat to our surprise was that not everybody reported that their memories for 9-11 were much more vivid and detailed or retrieved with a, a greater sense of reliving. Um, only about half the subjects reported uh, a greater sense of reliving when coming up with 9-11 memories. And so we looked at the surveys that we collected about what happened to these subjects on 9-11 to see what predicted whether or not you, your memories for 9-11 had these special qualities that we call flashbulb memories. And the primary thing that predicted whether or not your 9-11 memories were, um, were recollected with a greater sense of reliving, reliving, a sense of detail and vividness, was how close you were to the World Trade Center. Those subjects who um, had a higher sense of vividness for their memory were on average around Washington Square here at the center of NYU's campus. Those subjects who didn't show much of a difference in how they rated their memories for 9-11 versus the memories from the events of summer, the summer 2001 were on average around the Empire State Building in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, we then wanted to go back and say, okay, um, what's different in the brain when you have this sense of vividness and detail when you're recollecting your memories for 9-11? And what we saw in that case was that 
um, the people who were downtown on 9-11 showed greater activation in this brain region called the amygdala. And this, the, the amygdala activation was correlated with how far you were from the World Trade Center. Now we know the amygdala is important in the feeling of threat. It's also important in changing memories with arousal. So we know it's important in emotion and memory more broadly. Um, and so perhaps it wasn't surprising, given what we previously knew, that this was the region that helped predict whether or not you had this strong sense of reliving when you came up with your memories from 9-11. Um, and this was the first, the first study ever that showed something about what the brain is doing when you're coming up with memories for these types of events. So now we can take this and put this into the bigger picture of what we know about memories for these types of events and know that you know, the memory still may be somewhat special for people who are in Midtown relative to other things in their lives, but it's going to have a different quality um, if you were actually here and you experienced it. And we know that brain regions that are important in threat, in experiencing threat, or important in emotion and memory are going to be more involved if you were close um, to 9-11 on that day.